Grab your songbook and then grab your seat or grab your seat then grab your songbook, however you want to do that. 230. And stand with me, please. 230. Glory to his name. 230. Down at the cross where my Savior died, down where for cleansing from sin I cried, there to my heart was a blood of So sweetly abides within there at the cross where he took me in. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was a blood of mine. Glory to his name. Third verse. Precious fountain that saves from sin. I am so glad I have entered in. There Jesus saves me. Sing along tonight. 258. 258. There is a fountain. 258. There is a fountain filled with blood from the angels raised. And sinners watch me.
Thank you. You may be seated. 157. 157. Praise be to the Lord. Again with me, 296. 296. Be still my soul. 296.
should not be in hell. Be still, my soul. The hour is hastening on when we shall be forever with the Lord. When this time that we're in. Pray for Nellie Taylor up at the hospital, going to have his heart surgery, and Betty Wilson still figuring out what's going on with this lung cancer issue. Jeremy Tomo recovering from the COVID down in Deland. CJ Gerard, uh, little CJ's having eye surgery tomorrow. And it's not little CJ, but young guy. So pray for that happening tomorrow. Remember to pray for that Josh Domran that, or John Domran that Alice asked to pray for this morning. And just remembering our missionaries and their service around the world and uh, our country and wisdom, things happening here. So let's go ahead, go to the Lord in prayer, and speak in his face, his guidance. Brother Hoppy, can you lead us in prayer tonight, sir? Let's pray as Gene Hoppy asks God's favor on this service and this church. And praise our God. Father God, we glorify you, the one that can speak things into existence, the one who is so powerful and majestic, the one who rules the universe, the one who has created each and every one of us, the one who has saved each and every one of us. God, you are so magnificent. We just stand in awe of you. God, we just ask now that we can humbly come before your throne. You have invited us to do so. And now, Lord, we do that with confidence that you will hear your children. And, Lord, we just ask now that as we approach that you will nod the scepter of your love toward us. And, God, now as we approach, we, we humbly ask that you hear what we have to say to you, God. We ask that you bless our, our church, our pastor tonight as he speaks. We ask, Lord, that you bless our missionaries. We ask, God, that you bless Brother Paul as he tries to get back to Moldova where he's so much needed. We ask that you bless Josh and Annie over there in Ireland. Father, we ask that you bless all those that we've been praying for this morning, this evening, especially Nellie and, and, and the, the ones that, that were mentioned again this morning and, and, and that are on our hearts. Father God, we just pray for our church. Lord, especially we pray for this country. Lord, our leaders are all messed up. There's so much infighting. God, we know that you're in control. Help us to realize that. Help us to put our trust in you. Help us to, to just look to you and to let all this mess just not bother us at all. Lord, we know that you are the king, that you are on the throne. And nothing goes on without your approval and without your, without your knowledge. And so, Lord, we'll just trust you. We'll, guide, we'll let you guide our hearts. And now, Lord, as we open your word, as we look into what you have to say to us tonight, God, please open us so we can hear and understand all that you have to say, all that you want to let us hear. And we'll give you the glory, the praise, the honor, and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. We um, have food pantry this week. Pray for the pickup on Friday and the um, dispersal on Saturday as we want to be a blessing. And it's 
have been over the years we've done this. That's happened in this week. And um, two weeks, or not this Saturday, a week from Saturday, the youth rally. Uh, I'm at uh, JD's farm. We pray for that, that whoever comes will be a blessing. And um, you're all invited to come out to sit out there and hear the preaching. It starts at 10 o'clock on, on that morning out there. And be special music. And, and then, yeah, so that's coming up. Be in prayer for that. Brother Paul, come on up. Paul Hamilton is going to be preaching tonight again, and sure love this brother. Amen. Brother, if you want to grab the mic, it's just right on that table, and you can grab it on your way up. He came out from amongst us, used to teach up in Super Church, and go out on visitation, and I don't know if you ever sang in the choir, but did about everything else. Good to be here tonight. Amen. Appreciate that. Yeah, thank you. So I just appreciate uh, the prayers. We really need it, and uh, just uh, thankful for the Lord and what He's trying to do in our lives. And just want to thank you too, uh, holding the ropes here, and all of you go to work every day. I can probably hate those crummy jobs you go to, but there's people like us that are grateful that you do get up every morning and you go to work and you sacrifice so people like us can do what we can do and we couldn't do it without the church here. I'm just very grateful for Central Baptist Church. Uh, like like Pastor said, I, I came out of here, we, we did things in the church and I think uh, it's just a blessing to know that there's people back here that care about us and are praying for us and and uh, it's uh, sad that all this stuff has happened to our country, and especially the virus, and people can't enjoy church, and things have changed. But, you know, thank God that Jesus Christ never changes. Amen. Thank, thank, thank you that uh, yeah, greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world, for sure. So we're real grateful for that and appreciate the, the pastor and the messages we've heard here. And it's a real, real joy to our heart to see the church just keep going for the Lord. So Amen. just want to encourage you while we're here and take your Bibles tonight to Jeremiah chapter 18. And if you would please get another scripture in Job 23. Jeremiah 18 and Job 23. And I've been just praying and in our church over there, I have been teaching through Jeremiah verse by verse, and the Lord's given me a few things out of this, and just want to be a blessing to people that are maybe on the edge and maybe uh, going through some trials in your life. Maybe, uh, you know, you get tired of just getting up and doing the same things every day. This is for you tonight. The Bible says in Jeremiah 18, the word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I'll cause thee to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he wrought a work on the wheels. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter, so he made it again another vessel that seemed good to the potter to make it. And the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, can I do with you as this potter, saith the Lord? Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are ye in my hand, O house of Israel. What instant I will speak concerning a nation, and concerning a kingdom, to pluck up and to pull down and to destroy it. If that nation against whom I pronounce turn from their evil, I will pronounce, I, I will repent of the evil that I thought to do unto them. And that what instant I shall speak concerning a nation, and concerning a kingdom, to build it and to plant it, if it do evil in the sight, then it obey not my voice, and I'll repent of the good wherewith I said I would benefit them. Now therefore go to speak to the men of Judah, the inhabitants of Jerusalem, saying, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I frame evil against you, and devise a device against you. Return ye now every one from his evil way, and make your ways and your doings good. They said, There's no hope, but we will walk after our own devices. Will everyone do the imagination 
of his evil heart. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we pray that the Spirit of God would speak to each soul tonight, Lord. We pray that you'd have your will and your way in our hearts, Father. We pray that if there be any wicked way in us, that, oh God, that you would deal with us according to your will and to your word. Father, bless the, the, the preaching of your word. Lord, give us ears to hear this tonight what your spirit would have to speak to us about. Lord, I just pray if there's one here that's lost, that's undone, that doesn't know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior tonight, that, Lord, they'd hear miraculously from on high and be born again by the blood of Jesus Christ. Lord, help the Christian. Help those that are downtrodden, those that are discouraged. Lord, would you lift them up out of that miry clay and set their feet on a solid rock again. Thank you for your precious word. Now, I'm asking you to anoint the, the message tonight and speak to hearers. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. In verse 1 and 2, the Bible says the word came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I'll cause thee to hear my words. You see, brothers and sisters, God tells Jeremiah that these people won't listen to the preaching. I'm going to give you an object lesson, and, and through Jeremiah tonight, you got to remember the book of Jeremiah, the nation of Israel, has rejected the Lord over and over again. And they came out of the book of Jeremiah and into Isaiah, and it's over with. And Jeremiah tells them they're going to go into captivity. God tells Jeremiah they're not listening to your preaching. He says, you go down to the potter's house and let an object lesson preach for you. And he says, I'll cause them to hear my words. In verse 3, it says, When I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he wrought a work on the wheels, and the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter, so he made it again another vessel, so it seemed good to the potter to make it. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, can I do with you as this potter, saith the Lord? Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel." You see, brothers and sisters, in Jeremiah 18, you read that the vessel was marred in his hand and he had to remake it. It's, it's an interesting thing when you get to Jeremiah 19. Look over there if you would. You'll find out something. Jeremiah 19 and look at verse 10. Then shalt thou break the bottle in the sight of the men that I go with thee. Now notice what he says. He's got an earthen bottle in verse 1, and God tells him to go break that bottle in front of them. There are two different things that you see here. First of all, in one thing, God said pottery is marred, and he made it again. The second thing he says is another instance, he threw it away, and he breaks it. The portrait here for us to learn tonight there's nothing more that I can do for you, Israel. Now you're going to have to be broken in judgment. Tonight I want to preach a, a, preach a little while on this thought. Stay on the wheel. Stay on the wheel. I believe this potter's house could represent the church tonight. Jesus Christ is the potter. In Genesis we know God made man out of the dust of the earth and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. And Paul says in Romans chapter 9, Hath not the potter power over the clay? In 2 Timothy about the ministry, God says about the making of the vessel, he said there's vessels of honor and there's vessels of dishonor. So brothers and sisters, the potter and the clay runs all the way through. If God does that, we ought to pay close attention to it tonight. The potter's house could be the church in application. The potter is the Lord Jesus Christ and the clay is a Christian. The clay and the potter connects with the crucifixion. Jeremiah is prophesying here in Jeremiah chapter 18 of Israel. The clay is Israel. And I want to kind of apply this to our lives tonight. Jeremiah 18, the clay, if you look at it, was still moldable. It was still soft. Look at Jeremiah 18, please, and look at verse 4. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter, so he made it again another vessel that seemed good to the potter to make it. You see, brothers and sisters, in Jeremiah 19, 
The clay had gotten so hard and so resistant to the touch of the potter's hand that the potter couldn't do anything with it. So you know what God does? God tells Jeremiah, I've got to break it. And so the portrait here tonight is, if you will not yield your life to the hand of the potter, God has to break us. And that's what he's doing here with Israel tonight. Jeremiah 19, the people that gotten so hard and they'd gotten so brittle and God had to break them. Romans chapter 12, God's purposes for us after we're saved, it's to be conformed to the image of our son, the Lord Jesus Christ. The clay is a picture of a saved child of God. We are only dirt, if you think about it. I remember Rex Harrison preaching here and ministering the word. He said, you're not, not, nothing but a bunch of animated dirt balls. <laughs> That's really true, isn't it? We're only dirt. You ever think about clay is worthless? It's sorry. It's undesired dirt. And I'm glad that God can take just a piece of dirt like myself and like you, and he takes it to the potter's house, and he makes it just exactly the way he wants it. God takes that which is worthless and makes it valuable and useful into the hand of God. But I want you to see here in this scripture, the potter uses three things here, I see, that makes the pottery. The first thing the potter will use is the potter will use water. God takes the water of the word of God and God puts it on the clay. He puts it in our hearts. He puts it in our minds and our spirit. Let me say, if you're going to be on the wheel of God tonight, you're going to have to get to where the water of the word of God is constantly being applied to your life. You can do that personally, but that's why we need preaching. All of us need preaching. That's why you need to be in church on Sunday. That's why you need to be in church on Thursday or Wednesday night. You need the water of the word of God because if you don't get it, you'll get brittle and hard and you'll need the water of the word of God to soften you up. So, you know, we need to be prepared in the hot potter's hand. That's why we come to church. We come to church to be prepared by the potter. Another inter interesting thing is when the wheel's spinning, God uses the wind. So not only does God use the water, but God uses the wind. You see, that wind is a type of the Holy Ghost here. And that wind is passing over that vessel. It's also a type of being conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. That's why God uses the water, and that's why God uses the wind. The wind is a type of the Holy Spirit. Boy, I don't know about you, I, can, I, I need the Holy Spirit. I don't know about you, when I hear preaching, I need the Holy Spirit to speak to my soul. I don't know about you, I need the Holy Spirit's convicting power in my life. I need God to speak to me every countless day of my life. And look, brother, if God isn't speaking and then God isn't working, we're in real trouble. We need the wind of the Holy Spirit. I'm thankful that God uses the water in your life at the same time he uses the wind to take that water and he begins to make us more conformable to the image of the Lord Jesus Christ. See, it isn't you making yourself conformable to the image of Jesus Christ. It's the water with the wind making you more conformable to Jesus Christ. You see, it's the water, the preaching of the Word of God, the Word of God working out in your life and you being yielded to the Holy Spirit and being submissive to the Holy Spirit so the Holy Spirit and the Holy, Holy Word of God can work in your life and change your life and change your direction and keep you going in the right direction. Just think how much we need the wind of the Holy Spirit. Think about how much God works in our life. Think about the times where you're downtrodden and think about the times where you don't know what you're doing sometimes and God's Holy Spirit speaks to you through the Word of God and you could be going in your car or you could be going uh, talking to a friend or you could be out and about doing things that you're, that, uh, in, the, in, the, in the stores and things like that and God be talking to you while everything else is going on. We need the wind of the Holy Spirit. But I want you to see not only does God use the water and God uses the wind, but I want you to see God uses the wheel. And the wheel is what I want to preach on tonight. The wheel is a round object and it has a pedal down there and the potter pumps that pedal. That wheel is spinning all the time. And there's something interesting tonight about the wheel. 
It doesn't have corners on it. It doesn't have edges on it. You can't get a hold of it. What God has in a picture of the wheel tonight, you can't get a handle on your life yourself. You don't have control of your life. You're not the one in charge of your life. You're the one on the wheel. But you're not in charge of the wheel. The wheel is the problem for most of us tonight. There's no edge that we can get a handle on it. The wheel is a problem for most of us. There's no edge on that wheel. We can't get a hold of it. The wheel just continues to keep spinning. And our job as saved people is to stay on the wheel as it turns. The problem with most of you is you want to handle your own life. The problem with me is I want to handle my life. But you know what I learned as a Christian man is you're not in charge of your life. God's in charge of your life. You have to yield yourself to the Spirit of God. You've got to submit yourself. You've got to humble yourself down so you can hear from God. And you have to be able to get as close to God as you can and be submissive to Him. I want you to know that you're not in charge of the wheel. You see, the wheel is a problem for most of us in our lives. There's not an edge where we can get a handle on it. So most of you want a handle on your life. The wheel can represent your faith. It can also be a wheel of service. People get thrown off their faith. They get thrown out of their service. They get their eyes and their, their, their mind on other things, and they get their mind and their, their, their eyes off of the things of God and get their eyes and their mind off the things of the Word of God, and they get off the wheel. The wheel can be church. They get thrown out of church. The wheel can be your marriage. You can get thrown off the wheel. You might want to get off the wheel of life. It's spinning. You don't know which way it it's taken you, but you need to stay on the wheel. We want to be in control of our life. I wonder how many people tonight, you're in control of your life and God's not in control. I know we say that we're in control of our life, but you know something? I wonder when was the last time you said, Lord, take the reins of my life. That's a major problem for saved people. I want you to know God creates situations in our life and circumstances that we can't even control. It's spinning. We can't tell for the front from the back. But God's the potter. He's always taking care of us. He's always seeing us through. We're the clay. You know, after salvation, he spends a, we have to spend an entire life conforming ourselves to the image of the, the Lord Jesus Christ. I wonder, are you as close to God as you are now as you were when you got saved? Sometimes things get out of control. But you know what God wants us to do? He wants us to stay on the wheel he wants the water of the word of God to get a hold of our hearts. He wants us to stay close to the wind and let the, let the, Lord, let the Lord continue to control our lives. I wonder when was the last time you said, Lord, take control of my life. But here's what's got to happen. Why is it a mistake for us to get off the wheel? God will do to you what he did to Israel if we do. He'll break you in judgment. Being broken in judgment is not what God wants for our lives. God wants you to keep getting to the water of the word. I wonder in your life, have you gotten somewhere off the word of God? Is there something the Lord's trying to do in your heart and life? I wonder, do you need to yield yourself to the wind of the Holy Spirit? You see, the pattern of the potter and the wheel story, there are two themes that run through it. There's a theme of the sovereignty of God where the potter is in control. And then there's also the theme of the free will of man. There's a personality in that clay God breathed in that clay the breath of life. You can't say that the clay doesn't have a mind of its own or a will of its own. Let me illustrate that. If there was any man in history that was put on the wheel of God, it was a man named Job. Look over at Job 23. Job 23. I want you to show you the secret of staying on the wheel. Look at verse 1. Then Job answered and said, Even today is my complaint bitter. My stroke is heavier than my groaning. Oh, that I knew where I would I find him, that I might come even to the seat. I would order my cause before him and fill my mouth with arguments. I would know the words which he would answer me and understand he would say unto me. Will he plead against me with his great power? No, but he would put strength in me. There the righteous might dispute with him, 
so should I be delivered forever from my judge. Behold, I go forward, but he's not there, and backward, but I cannot perceive him. On the left hand, where he doth work, but I cannot behold him. He hideth himself on the right hand, that I cannot see him. But he knoweth the way that I take. When he hath tried me, I shall come forth as gold. My foot hath held his steps, his way have I kept, and not declined. Neither have I gone back from the commandment of the lips. I have esteemed the words of, my, of his mouth more than my necessary food. But he is one mind, and who can turn him? And what is his soul desireth, even that he doeth? For he performeth the thing that is appointed for me, and many such things are with him. Therefore am I troubled at his presence, when I consider I'm afraid of him. For God maketh my heart soft, and the Almighty troubleth me. Because I was not cut off before the darkness, neither hath he covered the darkness from my fate. Notice something. In verse 1, he sees what God's trying to do in his life. In verse 2, Job says, I'd like to have a talk with God. In verse 5 and 6, Job is doing what we all do. He's going back and forth between despondency and faith. In one moment, he's full of faith. In the next moment, he's asking where God's at. Have you ever done that? In verse 7 and 8, you see him on the wheel. He's on God's wheel. In verse 9, he can't even find God. In verse 10 and 11 and 12 and 13, he's saying the potter is turning the clay and the clay is not turning the potter. In verse 14, people are on the wheel. In verse 15 and 16, here's what he's trying to do by keeping us on the wheel. Therefore am I troubled at his presence when I considered I'm afraid of him. Here it is. For God maketh my heart soft, and the Almighty troubleth me. You know, the reason Job was on God's wheel is God was trying to make his heart soft. I wonder maybe that might be what God's trying to do with us. He's trying to make our hearts soft. You know, when your heart's soft, you listen to the Lord. When you, your heart's soft, you're humble with the Lord. When, you're, when, when your heart's soft, you know that you've got a lot more ground to, to go with the Lord. You know what God wants in our life? He wants our hearts soft. Maybe that's what God's been trying to do in your heart. Whatever's going on in your life, it's God trying to make your heart soft so you'll listen to him. I don't know what people are going on in here, but God is telling Job why he's on the wheel here. Stay on the wheel tonight. Be humble with the Lord tonight and let God talk to you. You're going to have to let God put his hands on you tonight so you'll stay on the wheel. I don't know who I'm talking to tonight. I just know that the Lord had talked to me about this. And, you know, our job as Christians is to stay on the wheel and let God work on our heart. Amen. Several things that can knock you off the wheel. You know, your flesh can knock you off the wheel. You know, I think the greatest thing we can do as Christians is stay off the internet. There's a whole lot of people hooked up on pornography on the internet, and it gets them off track. I know a lot of young people that deal with all of that on the internet. You know, pride and people proud of themselves and their own pride will keep them off the wheel. The Bible says, pride goeth before destruction, a haughty spirit before a fall. You know, anger can knock you off the wheel. Bible says anger rests in the bosom of fools. Those are things that can knock you off the wheel. You know what the devil wants? He wants to knock you off the wheel. You know, our job as Christians is to stay on the wheel. Your feelings can knock you off the wheel. Job had boils all over his body from his head to his foot, and he took broken pottery and he had to scrape his flesh be careful, be careful tonight of the wealth and the health gospel. Those kind of things will knock you off the wheel. I, I know a lot of people that's been sick in my life, and there's been Christians. I can remember a lady in my church over in Moldova. Her name was Galena, and she was very sick later on in her life. But I, don't, I, I always remember when I get discouraged, I always see her face. 
She had such joy in her face when she got saved. She came to listen to me for about uh, seven or eight years, and she was a Seventh-day Adventist lady, and she believed that the only way to heaven was uh, to obey the Ten Commandments and obey the Golden Rule. And she came to me, and she came, and she listened for seven to eight years the preaching of the gospel on Wednesday, on Thursday night, and on Sunday. She never missed a service. She took notes. You could see her Bible. It'd be like if you took her Bible and threw it in a threw it in a bathtub and then put it out on the porch. Her, her Bible was so swelled up from turning the pages and she had things written from Genesis to Revelation. And I remember after eight years of preaching, that woman came forward in our services and she humbled herself under the mighty hand of God. And I said, Galena, why are you coming? She says, I'm coming to get saved. I said, I thought you were already saved. She says, no, I'm not saved, I wanna get saved. And she bowed her head and trusted Jesus Christ, her Savior. And after that, I never seen a woman so joyful in the Lord. It didn't matter what was going on in her life. She just had the presence of God on her. You ever meet people? They just have the presence of the Lord on them. They just have a joy about them. No matter what would be going on in their life, they still got a radiance of joy running through their face. You can tell they're saved. They may not believe everything you believe. They might not know everything that we know, but they're born again and they love the Lord Jesus Christ. I just thank the Lord for that. Don't let feelings knock you off the wheel. Don't let your family knock you off the wheel. I know some of you parents, you have kids that are not in church. I know some of you ladies who have sons and daughters that are not in church. Don't let that kind of thing knock you off the wheel. Look at Job chapter 1. Let me show you an example of it. Job 1. Job 1 and look at verse 5. And it was so when the days of their feastings were gone about that Job sent and sanctified them and rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For God said, it may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus, thus did Job continually. You know what we see here? Job offered burnt offerings after they were feasting. Anybody catch that right there? Job went to church when his kids were partying on Saturday night. Job's wife was not with him. Job didn't have the support of his wife. You see, you have to be careful. You're going to deal with family situations, brother, that are not good, and God's going to see if you love your family more than you love him. Job stood for God. Job was a shining example for his family. Your family will try to knock you off the wheel. Let me ask you a question. What if your family gets out of shape? You going to still come to church? I remember a family here years ago that I knew. They, uh, they got saved and uh, they're, uh, they're, uh, the mother got saved out of Catholicism and they, uh, the kids got saved and came to church and then they were really growing in the Lord Jesus Christ and they were doing well for themselves. And all of a sudden, brother, there was one day uh, the wife stopped coming to church. And then all of a sudden it was just the husband and the kids coming to church here. And then all of a sudden the kids, one kid started not coming to church. And then it was the boy that started to come with his dad. And then all of a sudden uh, the dad was just missing church. He was missing Sunday and he was missing uh, Wednesday night. And so we got out there to visit to him, and I said, what would be the problem? He said, you, he opened the garage door, and he says, you see that new car out there? My wife had to get another job to pay, for that, to pay for that vehicle out there. You know what happened? Something knocked him off the wheel. You know, you've got to be careful. Some of those little things in life can knock you out of the race, can knock you off the wheel. You know what? I want to encourage you tonight. God is liable to get your children or someone in your family all bent out of shape 
If your kids quit church, I wonder, would you quit church tonight? I don't know about you. I want to stay on the wheel no matter what my family does. Look at Matthew chapter 10. You're going to stay in your Bible when everybody criticizes you? You're going to continue to keep praying when nobody else does? You're going to continue to live, with, live for the Lord when someone criticizes you from within? Look at Matthew chapter 10, please. And look down at verse 34. Think not that I've come to send peace on the earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. So the context here is a sword, right? For I'm come to set a man at variance against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's foes shall be they of his own household. He that loveth father and mother more than me is not worthy of me, and he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he that taketh not his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. He that findeth his life shall lose it, and he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. He that receiveth you receiveth me. He that receiveth me receiveth him that sent me. He that receiveth a prophet in the name of the prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. And he that receiveth a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. And whosoever shall give to drink unto one of these little ones a cup of cold water only in the name of a disciple, verily I say unto you, he shall in no wise lose his reward. I want to encourage you, don't get off the wheel when it comes to your kids. Parents love their children more than they love God. I wonder, is that your, your story tonight? You remember Eli in, in, in 1 Samuel? Eli honored his sons before the Lord. You know the best way to teach children faith is to show them you love God more than, they, than you love them. Do you love God more than you love your family? Do you love God more than you love your husband? Do you love God more than you love your wife? Do you love God more than you love your brother? Do you love God more than anything? You know what the problem with most families is they make idols out of their kids. Another thing that will knock you off the wheel is a man that's controlled by his wife. I've seen more men leave church over their wife not liking the preacher. Many of women live in contempt and it runs into the husband. Are you listening? I was preaching uh, in a church one time and I had a woman snarl her nose at me the whole time I was preaching. I can always tell when things are going well, it's when somebody's mad as a hornet back there snarling their nose at me. Listen, if you ever start snarling your nose at me, it'll flip my switch, I guarantee it. And I was preaching and, you know, I just thought to myself, well, that woman's got a Jezebel spirit about her. You know what, what'll keep you and on the wheel is being a submissive woman and being submissive to your husband and being submissive to the Lord. You know what'll keep you from getting that Jezebel spirit? It's some water and it's some wind. I wonder what happened to Job's wife. You never hear about it again. What was Job's wife doing to him? She walked right up while he's sitting in that ash heap and he's got boils all over his body. And you know what she told him? Curse God and die. You know, friends will knock you off the wheel. I just want to encourage you, stay on the wheel of God tonight. Job had a bunch of friends. You know what he said to, about them? Miserable comforters, comforters are they all. Be careful of friends you're hanging out with. Be careful of who you keep your company with. You know, I've seen a lot of friends try to lead you out of the church. Be careful being, uh, letting friends lead you in the wrong direction. I wouldn't mess with anybody that runs this church down. I wouldn't mess with anybody that runs a preacher down here and has all kinds of bad things to say to him. I wouldn't even talk to him. Don't, don't come up to me talking to me about anything. I won't even talk to you. I know, where, I, I know what the Lord wants, brother. Be careful of it because that thing can knock you off the wheel. I don't want to be a garbage truck, do you? Amnon had a friend. 
You know fads will knock you off the wheel. One day you believe the Bible, the next day you don't believe the Bible. Be careful who you're listening to on the radio. Be careful who you're listening to uh, on a tape or a, some, a CD. Be careful listening to some of these preachers who don't really preach the truth. They preach the half-truth and they throw in the gospel here and there. I heard a lot of people say, well, he's preaching the gospel. Really? He believes in speaking in tongues. You think that's the right one to be listening to? That kind of thing will knock you off the wheel. Because you know what those people will say? You don't have enough love. And you ask them what their definition of love, they can't even tell you what their definition of love is. But that kind of stuff will knock you off the, off the wheel. Think about it. You know, finances will knock you off the wheel. Living above your standards. You know, getting away from God and thinking you need this and that. And then all of a sudden, you know, you're starting working for that and not working for the Lord. Living above your means. Be careful. Don't let anything knock you off the wheel. Tonight, I want to encourage you, stay on the wheel. Stay on the wheel and let the Lord work in your life. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, today is a day of salvation. Repent of your sins and trust the Lord Jesus Christ, your Savior. You're not saved by your works. You're not saved by your good deeds. You're not saved by going to church. You're not saved by proving yourself to the Lord. You're not saved by getting better and better and having to do more things for the Lord. You know, you don't have to do anything to get saved. All you have to do is repent and believe the gospel and receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And if you've never trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior, it doesn't matter what you do in the church. It doesn't matter how many gospel tracts you, you give out. It doesn't matter how many people you preach to. If you've never been born from above and you've never received the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, today is a day of salvation. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Jesus said, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and go in and out and find pasture. Jesus said, I'm the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. He's the door. He's the way. He's the truth. Have you trusted the Lord Jesus Christ, your Savior? You say, well, I, uh, I go to church. That's a good thing, but that's not salvation. You say, well, I've been baptized. That's a good thing, but that's not salvation. Well, you know, I try to live the best I can. That's not salvation. Well, you know, I try to be a good neighbor, and I try to listen to people, and I try to be kind to people, and I try to give to people. That's not salvation. Salvation is of the Lord. The Bible says, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourself. It is a gift of God. It's not of works, lest any man should boast. It's the Lord Jesus Christ. Have you trusted him? Has there been an ever, a time in your life where you've received the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and God by his Holy Spirit touched your heart and you received the gift of God of salvation in the Lord Jesus Christ? If you've never trusted Christ and you've never repented of your sins and turned from your evil and your wicked ways, listen, you're not on the wheel. You're outside the wheel. You're on your way to a devil's hell. The Bible says the dead in Christ... The dead in Christ will be in hell. The dead, the dead, small and great, will stand before God and the books will be opened. And that book which is called the book of life. And the Bible says those not found written in the book of life were cast in the lake of fire. This is the second death. You see, if you die without Jesus Christ, not only will you burn in hell, but you'll have to appear before God with his sins on you. And one day he'll say, I never knew you. And he'll cast you into a lake of fire. You see, Jesus paid for your sin debt. You see, when Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins, he was buried in a tomb. And while he was buried in his tomb, his soul left his body. He went down to the center of the earth where the burning souls are, and he preached to those people in hell. And you know what he, why he went to hell? He went to hell to pay for your sins. He took your sins to hell. You know, thank God my sins are not on Jesus Christ anymore. My sins are in hell. And if you reject the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you have to go to hell to pay for your sins. Why don't you trust Jesus Christ? Thank God on the third day, he, uh, he came out of hell and he led captivity captive and he entered into his body in that tomb and thanked the Lord. On the third day, he rose bodily from the grave. He paid the price for our sins. He paid the price that we couldn't pay. He paid for you and I so we might have eternal life. Amen. Have you trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior? If you've never done that, receive him tonight. 
Receive him as your Lord and Savior. Don't leave this world undone. Don't leave this world with a profession that was never confession of your sins. The Bible says, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. The Bible says, With the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Have you received him as Lord and Savior? If you're saved, stay on the wheel. Don't try to control your life. Let him have control of your life. I wonder tonight, maybe you're here tonight and something has got you off track. Something has got you off the wheel. Maybe your prayer tonight is, Lord, help me to stay on the wheel. Keep me submissive to your Holy Spirit. Keep me getting up in the morning and praying. Keep me getting up in the morning reading that Bible. Lord, help me to stay on the wheel. My encouragement for you tonight is stay on the wheel and let the wind of the Holy Spirit and the water of the Word transform and change your life. Let's stand for prayer. With all heads bowed and eyes closed and nobody looking around, we have a hymn of invitation and tonight, and I want you to ask yourself tonight, would there be something in your life that's uh, got you off the wheel? Maybe your family is trying to pull you away from the Lord, and it hurts you greatly, and you know that you need, to, you need the Lord to intervene. Maybe there's someone out there that you've got a friend that you need to stand up to. You need to take a stand for the Lord. As you're listening to the music tonight, and God may be speaking to your heart, if there's a need on your heart, maybe you're just like Job, maybe you need to say, Lord, I need your help. Maybe you need to come and say, Lord, help me. If you're here tonight and you don't know Jesus as your Savior, I can't tell you that any of the message will help you. The only thing that would help you is salvation. Salvation will change your life. Would there be anybody with an uplifted hand that could say, Brother Paul, I'm not sure if I died right now, I'd go to heaven. Would there be anybody here in this room that say, pray for me, I'm not sure I'm saved. Is there anybody like that? Would you stick your hand up and put it right back down? Is there somebody here tonight? Maybe you're here tonight and you've gotten off the wheel a little bit. Maybe uh, whatever it is that's gotten you off the wheel. Maybe you say, Lord, Brother Paul, I, I need prayer tonight. I need, I need something from the Lord. I need the Lord to intercede on my behalf. Would there be somebody here tonight that said, please pray for me? Anybody like that tonight? Yeah, I see that. Would be somebody else? Please put, yeah, I see that, please. Somebody else, is a third hand? Maybe you just need to come tonight and do business with the Lord. Maybe it's to say, Lord, help me to stay on the wheel. We'll sing it, sing in this song, this hymn invitation song. What is it, brother? 366. 366. Let's sing this commitment to the Lord and Maybe while we're singing and God's talking to you, you could come and talk to the Lord tonight. Have I no Try me, 
Master today. Wider than snow, Lord, wash me just now, as in my presence humbly I bow. Have thine own Father, thank you for the word of God. Thank you for the wheel, Lord, of life. Help us not to take control of our own life, Lord, but you could have control of us. Lord, keep us on the wheel. Lord, use the water of the word of God and the wind of the Holy Spirit to keep us on the wheel. Lord, I just pray as we, Lord, get through this week that, Lord, you'd help us to stay on the wheel of life. Stay, along, stay, on your, stay in your wheel, Lord, and You'd work in our lives and move in our hearts. Lord, those that you've dealt with tonight, Father, I just pray that you'd continue to mold them and help them, Lord, as they, they submit their will and their hearts to thee. Father, help, help each one tonight. Thank you for your precious Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for the life of Job and how he had so many obstacles, Lord, but yet he was all in with thee. Lord, give us people here that are all in with thee. We thank and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.